spent some time lip vibrating or lip buzzing on hopefully your jorb. Uh, you've worked on your mouthpiece and now it's time to actually talk about working on a horn. Now for this video I'm working on Aris Berkeley's CR614 which is a great sounding cornet. If you're interested in a cornet by all means do check it out. One of the things I'd like to talk about uh, before we get into specifics in terms of playing the horn and uh, fundamentals of improvising is really the importance of listening. Uh, having an oral model that you can actually listen to on a consistent basis and really start to model how you want to sound on your horn. Now, back when I was a kid, um, I was very fortunate. Uh, my dad had an extensive record collection, uh, the recordings of um, uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Harry James, Freddie Hubbard, Miles Davis, a lot of the great trumpet players, that some of which I went on, on to actually become students and friends and work with closely in my lifetime. But it's so, so important that you go and you check out, uh, listen to the old recordings now for, in this style that you just heard me play in the introduction, I was really sort of hearing, a mo obviously, a much more old school, uh, you know, 19, 20, 20, 30, somewhere in that ballpark of playing. And, you know, definitely check out King Oliver and Louis or Louis Armstrong. Um, uh, listen to uh, Bix Beiderbeck and, and even later with Buck Clayton and Cootie Williams. And there's, there's just so many um, fantastic trumpeters uh, that, that has sort of paved the way for us uh, today. So you almost have to become a, a student of the history uh, of, of your instrument to really hear that sound. Most importantly, hear the sound and even internalize that sound, feel that sound. Uh, imagine that's you playing, getting that sound out of your horn. One of the first things I like to work with players on uh, in terms of improvising is learning uh, basic triads. So for this video, we're gonna talk about major and eventually minor triads, uh, and also something called approach tones, which, which we'll get into in a few moments. But the first, idea is you want to take a C major triad and play it on your horn. Now all a C major triad is, I'm sure by now you probably know your C major scale, so let's just go through that real quickly. The first note of a C major scale is, okay, there's your one. So let's call that the root of the one, okay? Now let's go to the two. Okay, there's your two. There's your three or your third. There's your four or your fourth. And there's your five. Now, just that one, three, and five, so far we understand we have one, two, three, four, and five. So we've got one, three, and five. That's those one, three, and five is what's known as a, a triad. 
uh, or in this case, a C major triad, C, E, G, or one, three, five. Now, for our purposes today, I'm going to be playing in more of an old school, as I did in the introduction, in the style of uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, to kind of give you that feel. A lot of the uh, older players in that style of music at the time used uh, triads, more so triads, as a basis to express themselves, combined with another principle, which we'll talk about uh, again, or our approach tones in just a moment. So for now, let's just talk about taking the elements of one, uh, three, and five, and then we're just going to play a basic exercise. Uh, and actually, you can do the octave on top. So it'll be one, three, five, eight. The eight is the octave. Okay, and then we're gonna go one, three, five, eight, five, three, one. Okay, that's the first uh, exercise you can work on with your, your students is to really get that uh, one, three, five, eight, five, three, one. Uh, now, the key thing about this is once you have an, uh, an idea, uh, an understanding of a, of a so called concept, you want to take that and take it up a half step, not writing it out, but using your ears. So what's a half step up from C? It would be C sharp or D flat. So now we're going to do a D flat major triad. Okay, up another half step to the D. Okay, and so on and so forth. As high as you can possibly go, uh, and don't push yourself over time your range will naturally expand. Okay, the next exercise we're gonna work on is expanding on the idea of the one, three, five, eight. We're now gonna add the 10th, which is really, if you think about a scale, one, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So now we're gonna be using the one, three, five, eight, ten. Back down, eight, five, three, one. Okay, so now right off the bat, again, you're gonna take it in half steps. All the way up the horn, as comfortably as you can go. Now, after that, we want to start to think about improvising a little bit, taking that basic uh, structure uh, and start to mix it up a little bit. So we don't always have to play the exact uh, position of one, three, five, eight, ten in that exact order. We can start to mix it up a little bit. For instance, let's start on the three. Okay, so you're starting to use your imagination um, in terms of creating. Uh, other sounds. After that, we now have the one, three, five, eight, ten. Let's go ahead and add um, the six in there. Let's use the six. So now we're going to use. Okay, we're going to use the one, the three, the five, the six, the eight, and the ten. Let's see what we come up with. Maybe I'll start on. Uh, I'll start on the fifth this time. Yeah, one. Okay, now the great thing about improvising is you are essentially just taking an idea or a principle, and once you have that idea, then you're going ahead and you're using your imagination to express yourself. And that's what makes uh, the power of, of playing an instrument so incredible. Uh, you are essentially, once you have the idea, then you really can go ahead and have fun with this and just create what is your hearing, uh, thinking and feeling. Now, we're going to start to use the flat three in conjunction with the regular three, right? So obviously, uh, for now, our purpose is in the key of C major. We're going to be doing that's one, two, three. Let's put in the flat three. And combine that with the regular major three of the major scale. So watch this. Okay, 
So all we did there was we were just using the 1, the 3, the 5, the 8, and the 10 as we did previously, but now we also introduced the flat 3 or the, um, the flat 10 uh, up an octave. So let's try that one more time. Uh, and this time, we're going to add the 6 in. So we already used our 6. We're going to use our 6, our regular 3, our flat 3, and the full, we're going to open it up to the next octave up now. Let's see what we can come up with in terms of creating something. Now, I don't know exactly what I'm going to play, but I'm going to try to just create something based on that specific principles. All right? Okay, so now you go ahead and try to see uh, how you can express yourself using the principles of the major triad with the six and the flat three. Okay, so now you've had a chance to experiment a little bit with the, uh, the major triad and also using, in, using the flat three with the major three, the six, the flat 10, or the regular 10, uh, even the uh, higher six, 13 that higher octave, really allowing yourself to express yourself and have some fun using the major triad as a basis to um, express yourself. Now we're going to talk about the minor triad. Now, just as we use the, the same principles uh, with the major triad, it can be or definitely applicable to the minor triad. So now instead of having the one, three, five, we're going to have the one flat three, five. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply the same principle. So we're going to be doing the one flat three, five, eight. Now, we're going to use the 6 again, or the 13, depending on what octave it is, combined with the flat 3 uh, or the flat 10. Now, I did sneak in the uh, major third that one time. And just as you uh, did the, uh, with the major triad, you use the flat three, you can also sneak that in uh, as well. Now this is actually gonna serve as a nice segue for us uh, to our next step, which is going to be dealing with so-called approach tones. Now all an approach tone is, is a uh, chromatic, there are actually there are several uh, uh, there are several approach tones, but for our purposes today in this video right now, we're going to talk about single chromatic approach tones. So, what does that mean? Obviously, if you know your chromatic scale, let's say in the key of C, all the notes in the chromatic scale. So let's talk about a single upper approach tone into the root of a C major triad. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's use a lower single approach tone into the root of C major. Let's do that same idea, a single approach tone into the third of the major triad. Now you notice in some instances, um, some of the approach tones uh, are also uh, so-called scale tones of the parent scale of the, uh, the, the triad, uh, which is fine. 
it's more of an idea of starting to um, have an awareness level of using chromatic uh, single approach drums either a half step up or below primarily the one, the three, and the five of the triad. So uh, let's use a lower single chromatic, uh, chromatic approach tone into the third of the major triad. <laughs> Well, interestingly enough, now we have that flat three into the regular three. Right? We used it previously, but now we actually have a name for it. So it's really just a single chromatic lower uh, approach tone. Okay, so. Okay, just using that single approach tone, chromatic approach tone into the major third. How about the fifth? Let's do a um, upper. Let's try the upper approach tone into the fifth, single chromatic. Let's try a lower single chromatic approach tone into the fifth. Now, I'm playing these really in a more uh, structured way as far as the triad itself. You can really mix these things up and start to use your imagination as you've done previously. Uh, and this is where it gets a little more fun. So now I'm going to use uh, approach tones into chord tones of the major triad. Last thing we're going to do for this video is actually work with the minor triad using the same uh, concept or idea with approach tones again. So uh, let's use a single uh, chromatic approach tone into the root of the C minor triad. <laughs> let's use an upper single approach tone into the root of the C minor triad. Let's go to the flat three. Let's use a uh, single lower chromatic approach tone into the flat three. Okay, let's do a single upper approach tone, chromatic approach tone into the third flat three of the C minor triad. And now the fifth. Uh, which is going to be, uh, let's do the, let's see, the lower single approach tone, chromatic approach tone into the fifth of the C minor. And finally, let's go ahead and use the lower, or excuse me, the upper single uh, chromatic approach tone into the uh, fifth of the C minor triad. As you can hear, each one of these approach tones kind of opens up a new sound and a possibility for you to experiment with as an, as an improviser. So it's a great idea to really sit here with this, these two basic triads, the C major and the C minor. And then apply the basic single uh, chromatic approach tones to the major triad and the minor triad and see what sounds react for you, what you like to use. Ultimately, what we're trying to do here is to um, paint with sound. We're trying to create uh, a, a, a landscape of sorts. We're very much like an artist. We're sort of taking a color and a little bit of blue and yellow and, and orange and kind of putting all these things together.